the point is is that is that you know looking at looking at bitcoin if you're investing in bitcoin you have to really understand what it is that you are um you know you're buying into and kind of believe in that narrative now bitcoin came out and it was supposed to be um you know take over the banking system a medium of, a medium of exchange uh, disrupt the payment system obviously it hasn't done that too slow too expensive so now it's being seen as a store of value again personally it doesn't mean I'm, I'm whether i'm right or wrong it's just my opinion but um i don't totally buy it i don't totally believe in that narrative so i'm personally staying out but for anybody who is you know buying uh bitcoin it's it's um it's it's and or trading bitcoin in, in a sense has to understand that when you get when you get a lot of eyeballs on uh, an asset yeah you're going to get massive pullbacks you know that yesterday i think it was you know you can see that massive swing and that's basically just you know liquidity stop hunting etc so as you know uh, and many people i guess um uh, in the group but not many other people may not understand even people in the group may not understand this but for somebody you know for, for bitcoin to go higher there has to be enough sell orders mm -hmm. has to be sell orders yeah for, for for buying to facilitate yeah have to match the buying with the selling that's what liquidity is if there's not enough uh, sell orders yeah at you know to facilitate the buying then the only natural way uh, the only area that, that sell orders are going to be is below the market and why are they going to be below the market because that's where traders stop losses are right yep that's it <laughs> you know what i mean even they take profit if, they, if you're buying your take profit is a sell yeah. And your stop loss is a sell order. A sell order. Now, again, with the narrative of 146,000 plus Bitcoin long term target, like I said, you can bet, you know, um, everything you own that traders are literally now looking to buy in, right? Buying in because, you know, the logic is, um, well, the, the unsophisticated, the retail trader, um, in general looking to buy in at this at this price now again if you're not trading with if you're if you're literally buying bitcoin as far as on something like coinbase or you know binance or whatever it is and you're actually holding physical uh, uh bitcoin then that's fine right you're holding for the long term you're not trading with any kind of margin uh or or, or leverage right but mm -hmm. with, with, from a trading perspective which um the banks are going to you know be doing you know they've got uh, i think they've got a, a futures market in bitcoin etc um and they're looking to obviously you know there's, there's obviously leverage and margin trading but the point is and derivatives but the point is is that um if you're looking to buy bitcoin or trade bitcoin you really should expect at some point no one knows exactly when it's going to happen but really large swings and I'm talking about, you know, really kind of deep pullbacks. Yes, we understand that there are demand zones here, demand zones here, demand zones here, for example. But from a technical analysis perspective, there's no demand zone or no supply zone or no level, no technical indicator that is going to stand in the way of liquidity. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just it, 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 it's just a technical pattern. Yes, we identify where value potentially is, but it's whether the market agrees that there is, you know, enough, uh, you know, uh, buying enough demand at that area for prices to want to, you know, reverse. So um, buying Bitcoin, obviously, the, the, the best places to buy are obviously at you know areas of you know demand with the confluences that we use um but for me i think you're probably going to see at some point whether it's you know you know it definitely probably be this year but whether it's you know next week tomorrow next month whatever it is you're gonna see probably massive pullbacks this is unsustainable you know what I mean? That that move with no major pullback to even fair value. If you're looking at, you know, where the move probably started from from around here, 
right? And if we grab our, you know, uh, a, a fair value tool, right? So fair value, as we know, is is 50% between an expensive and a bargain area. So at one point that would have looked expensive, right? The high of a range or the, the high of price, that would have been expensive. But we don't see any kind of pullback to fair value. And markets must have, you know, mean reversion, right? There's a, there's a financial theory that price tends to revert back to its mean, yeah? So if you're thinking about mean reversion, prices haven't pulled back to their mean. And I guess I don't have to go through all those bars, but if we pull it up, if we pull this, it hasn't pulled back, right? It has not pulled back, has not pulled back, has not pulled back, has not pulled back to that 50%, even when it kind of pulled back around, you know, the, the 20,000 area, hasn't pulled back to the mean. So at best, you want to start looking for, you know, if you're looking at fair, what fair value is between an expensive area where probably the trend, you know, started somewhere around that 10,000 area, you know, because we were in a bit of a range, I guess, mm -hmm. from, you know, from here to here, prices were contained between that range. So if we're looking at that as being the last range and this being, you know, breakout, then probably fair value is at the low of that range there. So fair value actually is at around the 22,000 Bitcoin mark. Now, again, for, for now, if this remains the high and prices can't push higher, that's the fair value area here. Um, now, in the meantime, getting back to liquidity, um, we have to understand that if if the financial institutions are now looking at buying, yeah, as they are definitely, so strategists say digital asset is competing with gold for flows. Again, that's an <laughs> if if that's what strategists say. I guess that's what the you know the thing is, but I don't personally believe but it might be you know dropping bitcoin volatility needed to unlock you know price potential but the point is in 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 this is that if the if the financial institutions want to go long now on bitcoin yeah yes they're looking they're probably going to be buying also at highs if they believe long term but if they're trading as far as derivative spot using leverage etc then what they need to do is they need to create liquidity for them to buy they need to create the, the the buying or they need to create actually sell orders for them to buy and how do they do that by you know certain patterns right so we know that for example when you see massive moves to the downside yeah massive candles what does what does that do that seduces traders into going what short short yeah. and when traders take a new trade Sure. Who's on the other side of that trade? It's the big guys. <laughs> there you go. It's the big guys, yeah. right? Um, again, at certain areas of uh, obvious support and resistance levels. So what they'll do is they'll create a level, yeah, manipulate the market to create levels, yeah, and then with traders looking to do what at levels that support buy, yeah, right. yeah. What's, what's what's their stop loss? Just below the level. There you go. And it's a sell order. Then they'll manipulate the market to take out the sell orders. And at the same time, they can buy as they're right. manipulating the market because the transfer of wealth is from the loser to the winner. When our stop loss and our sell order is oh. triggered, it transfers to the entity on the other side of that. Yep. You know what I mean, so and uh you know so so there's many different ways to seduce you know buying in and it's usually to the two ways is literally driving markets down and as they drive markets down they basically buy as the market is going down yeah mm -hmm. or manipulating stop losses below um those those areas as we know because we we, we we trade stop hunts right so you so you know this but i want to relate this to 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 gold right so gold at the beginning of the year and this is what i was going to create the video on so yeah so i don't know if you were trading um <clears throat> uh or, or looking at gold around march uh were you looking at gold around then mm, no no i wasn't here right so you know now anyway that um 
you know what what had happened right with, with gold but at the time in march when this was happening yeah there was uh the the fed was slashing rates and this was basically just due to coronavirus you know the the, the world economy going into lockdown yeah. yeah so what they pretty much um uh you know did or what the, the financial markets say financial markets but gold um and, and and the banks really did was um they they wanted to buy gold right now everybody was looking to to, to buy but what happened during this period okay. it's when you know, yeah. there you go now the average price action trader who believes that price action is king yeah does not have <laughs> slightest clue yeah all right fair enough there were traders that would have made money on the downside right and just because you make money on a on a certain asset doesn't mean it was the right thing to do right just because you know we, we tend to justify our actions by the result but it doesn't mean because you because because you lie and get away with it doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do right so so it doesn't you know but 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 what do you think the financial institutions were doing Right, because they didn't—they didn't want to buy gold uh -huh. at 16s. They wanted to buy golds for cheap. Yeah, you know. So all they were doing, as prices were coming down and manipulating prices to go lower, yeah, they were buying, Those were buying, buying, right? buying, buying, exactly yeah. buying heavily into that because obviously gold being a safe haven asset, you know, the sky was falling, etc. And many people think, oh, they go. Oh, fundamentals don't work. Fundamentals don't work, uh -huh. but they do. Just not when you want them to. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not just all right. You know, we're in coronavirus, so prices are going to go high because everybody. Remember, again, liquidity. If everybody is buying, if there's nobody selling, then where is the liquidity? It must have been below the market, so below these these swings here, right? Stop losses. Yeah. Stop losses. You know what I mean? It must have been. It must. It would have cleared out all of the stops, but also allowed them creating the liquidity to the downside. So lots of selling. Who's not going to be tempted by that? You know that 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 downward price movement into getting short, especially over what a week or two. But the smart money were doing what? And at the, at this time, you can go back in the group as well. You know, and 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 look at this. I was saying that this was basically a massive stop hunt, and look at what happened. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's the same thing, right? So, you know, you get traders that want to get short, you know, around highs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or, right. And then <clears throat> what tends to happen is as they're getting short, so if they're selling here, yeah, and selling here, again, not to say that they can't make money or whatever it is, but what do you think is going on as these guys are pressing sell? There's buying. A buy. It's accumulating liquidity through that. Oh, that's the accumulation phase, what they yeah. would call it. But you would never know any of this if you don't understand fundamental analysis, as we know. So going back to Bitcoin and look up, look at this trade. Oh, by the way, you're in this trade. Did you get into gold down here? No, no, I didn't get into gold. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that is um, on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about this. Well, I got in on silver. To be fair, I got in silver. Right now. Yeah, I got in on silver. Yeah, Dece oh, December. Like, December and like uh, January are very busy for me at work. Ah, okay, okay, yeah, okay, no yeah. one. But did you get into silver on this trade? Did you get into on, yeah. on this? I got, I got oh, into really? silver. Yeah. You're dealing, you're dealing with me, yeah, so it's cool, be yeah. a, not a nice profit. Nice, nice, nice profit on. Yeah. on we just have a quick look on the on silver and mm. uh, uh, gusd looking at silver yeah so it's yeah. making it so you got in around yeah this 22 yeah. level yeah 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 that was it brilliant anyways um uh so going back to back to back to bitcoin and tying this all in is is just if 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 you are considering or if anyone you know considering I'm recording this obviously like you know just watching this um it's, it's just understanding value at the moment we know this is expensive yeah because otherwise prices would have gone higher if it wasn't so but I expect just like on gold where you get massive pullbacks to yeah. create the if, if prices do want to go higher 
you're going to have to have deep pullbacks to, you know, to these areas. Now, you're going to see probably narratives that say, oh, Bitcoin is crashing from 35, you know, 35,000 to 22,000. Smart money are just saying, hmm, this is my buying opportunity. And anything below that, as we know, is a bargain. But we have, if you believe the narrative, you know what I mean, of uh, that Bitcoin is a store of value. The dollar is being devalued because I think Citigroup as well, you know, last year we were talking about this, we talking about this for ages anyways, the Citigroup dollar may drop by 20% next year, you know, and, and that narrative is still, you know, um, true, I guess, um, as we know. And, oh, by the way, did you did you see the, um, oh, the, the, uh, not to get sidetracked, but did you see yeah. the 2021? Uh, let me go to bank research. Um, uh, where they have uh, data from all uh, big institutions. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually halfway through that. I'm reading. I was reading it this morning. Yeah, very yeah. interesting, isn't it? Very, very, very interesting. This is the kind of thing that we need to. I'm going to cover it probably tomorrow in um. I see, probably I will cover it tomorrow in tomorrow's group call. Definitely will, because this yeah. is uh, something that comes out. Um, you know, when 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 this type of analysis comes out, you have to, you know, you have to read it and uh, understand where the general themes are. So, um, very very good. But again back to um you know bitcoin and understanding value if you believe that the dollar is going to devalue you believe that um bitcoin is a, is a safe a safe haven uh, and a store of value and a hedge against inflation basically hedge inflation being a weaker dollar as you know a devalued dollar then any pullbacks are literally buying opportunities and that's pretty much it so supply and demand I get a lot of questions about whether supply and demand works on, you know, on, on cryptocurrencies, on um, bonds, on stocks and all that kind of stuff. Supply and demand works because it's right. supply and demand is a law, but it's it's understanding the fundamental analysis and risk sentiment and the drivers of value and future value and current value. And then you're looking at just identifying areas of, you know, um, uh, 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 potential value and then looking to trade those areas right like here, here was here was a very interesting uh setup and this is what is known as a bit of a cpr zone not in the traditional sense because we don't have an obvious level an obvious um uh, uh, uh level at the twenty six thousand because price has never been up this high but the mechanics of it is still the same so See this pin bar here. See that pin bar? How many traders do you think were placing their stop losses? Right above there. Above there, yeah. Just literally looking at that candlestick pattern. That's oh. perfect pin bar, doji, whatever you want to call it. Nice, brilliant reversal candle, yeah? Yep. And so people reverse into they think that price is going to reverse in thin air because if you think about where prices had gone shallow pullback massive and then people just tend to want to short for you know for no reason if you know what i mean um they think it can't go any higher i'm going to place my stop loss above yeah now their stop loss if they sold yeah is a buy order yeah yeah it's a now you can see that when so one second let's move that out of the way so when price didn't reverse and carried on going higher this is you know so they entered the trade they've been captured pain is here why pain because well unrealized unrealized losses right you see what i'm saying instead of yeah. risking maybe two percent <laughs> they uh you know, now they're down maybe 15, 20%. So they're in, you know, pain. They're not, you know, moving. They're moving and removing their stop losses, loss aversion bias, all of that. Yeah, don't trade with stop losses, et cetera, et cetera. Now, at what point do you think these guys were relieved? Look at that. Yeah. When it came down, yeah. Yeah, when it added 
because if you if your stop loss is somewhere around here just above that area there yeah or was above that that pin bar and you went short then what happens you know on the other side of that if you want to you know relief you want to see some relief to get out at your original one two percent loss or just a break even trade etc i don't think anyone got out of break even but um you know a small loss if you sold here you have to buy to exit right, and that demand, that's exactly it demand yeah. yeah so there was a lot of demand new traders looking at that level as what resistance should turn to what support or buying yeah more buying there and then new traders who managed to actually pick the top or you know basically managed to sell at the highs where are they looking to take profit if you sold up here to take profit around here is a buy buy again so that area there it's not the conventional way that we would look at you know as far as our technical setup yeah but you can see the mechanics behind it and it's obvious because it's driven by that pin bar right there yeah yeah what, what what does it look like on a smaller time frame like on a lower time frame let's have so, a quick yeah. look yeah, yeah again, i assume most of these traders we don't traders will be trading on a lower time frame yeah so lower time frame oh you've got no well, you've got you've got intraday traders you've got all manner of yeah. different trades. so again yeah. you can see level level yeah level. these guys probably would have maybe added in you know what i mean thinking that you know what possibly you definitely would have had traders caught down here you yeah. know at those regardless of what happened here and you can see it pretty much there yeah same mechanic if they didn't get relieved here yeah if they, if they weren't smart enough to to exit their their trade position there or literally they just added into a losing position yeah, thinking that it was going to go lower, lower, and then it just drags them again into deep water. Because remember, 30,000 was the level, right? Yeah. 30,000 was the zone that everybody was looking at. So, yeah, you probably would have, yeah, so you probably would have had, in fact, I know for a fact you would have had more traders getting short in and around these zones here, 100%. Yeah, and people taking profit there. Yeah, people taking profit there, but you would have definitely had traders getting short. Short here, short here, short just below the 30,000 supposed resistance, especially there. A little zoom in a little bit. Just clear this up. Yeah, so that 30,000 right there, that level right there. Yep, that nine o'clock this is like peak time <laughs> peak london time you know what i mean <laughs> oh. nice engulfing candle in the one hour that's going at at that thirty thousand level like it literally just came short of it and look at that drags them right into deep water so obvious yeah and then c p and then if they manage to get out there for, for an original loss or small loss those are the first guys that are going to get out but the all of these guys are still caught in their positions still waiting for that yeah. Yeah, still waiting for that and then what happened there if they sold here this is where demand is going to come in from take profits and then you've got new traders new orders people placing orders at what that level, yeah. resistance, resistance you know support boom right there now you know you see basically what's what's happening there right and that's that's pretty much it the algos are in da 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 da, da. but the, the mechanics of it is there it's all there so you can see supply and demand principles work in all markets but the the, the key factor is is that you you really have to understand why bitcoin or you have to have that belief that bitcoin is undervalued at a certain price or at certain prices yeah to me i don't know ma'am i'm just gonna stay out of it for now and just observe 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, me too. <laughs>